What is up everybody, Chris from Team Aquascape here and on this episode we are going to see a one of a kind pond that Spain has never ever seen before. You guys ready to check it out? Let's go! We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. Okay, as you guys can tell we are back out here in Spain. And yes, on this video, you are going to see a one-of-a-kind project that has never, ever, 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 ever been done before here in this country. You guys want to see where we left off? Still a construction site, as you guys can see. But this is where everything got left off. Ooh, we got the lights going. We have not been out here for almost a month. We got all of the intake bay done. Got the wetland area done, and we just had that main waterfalls. One thing that you didn't see get done was this incredible, absolutely incredible, enormous deck. Look at this. When Brian and I last left, this was still concrete, and they were just starting to set everything up to be able to build this deck on top. But if you remember, there was about a six, seven foot concrete slab, and then the brick wall runs underneath here. There's a bunch of gravel and then that liner came all the way back up over here. There he is. Jack, what do you think? I'm so excited to be back here and we turned on the lights first thing this morning because it doesn't get light here till after 8 a.m. It looks fantastic. I'm so happy that we're able to come back and have you here to help us finish this. It looks even better than I remember leaving it. So that's that's a good thing. Yes, that is a good thing. We can come <laughs> back three, four weeks later and be like, oh, what happened? Yeah, no, no, it looks great. I mean, I could see we're gonna knock out that waterfall pretty quick. I yep. think in a day and a half, that thing's done. Then we can move into our final grading, plumbing, and then get down to that fire pit. So we got five days to make this happen. I don't see that being an issue. And you brought out a pretty incredible reinforcement over here. Got Alan Decker here. Let's go check him out. Alan! How's it going, buddy? You've seen this guy on a lot of our videos. We got Alan Decker from Decker's Pondscapes. How are you, dude? I'm doing great. Being his winter at home and I'm here working, even better. Yeah, you can't beat that. Especially with you guys. It's a cool time. This is awesome. And I know you saw probably photos and stuff of this project, but what do you think now that you're actually out here laying your eyes on it? Well, it's just like we always say, pictures never do anything justice. It's just incredible. The character rocking and everything and the colorations, like, it's really cool. And the setting, the way it's designed up against the house, can't beat it. And this incredible deck that we're standing on, it's just such an incredible design and it makes it such an approachable water feature. On um, the interactivity, you know, between the bridges, stepping stones, you know, the deep stream that you can hop across and then the deck handling out right over the edge of the water is just awesome. So a lot of things have happened while we were away, but we still have an enormous amount of work ahead of us. Super excited to show you guys by the end of the video the incredible project that has taken place. As you can see, it's pretty windy out here. We've got about 30, 40 mile an hour gusts, but the weather is beautiful. The sun is going to be shining. And this is day one of us coming back out to finish up this project. If you didn't already know by watching the video just before this one, we were out here on a 14 day stint trying to finish this project. We ran into a lot of challenges, trials and tribulations that unfortunately prevented us from finishing the project first time, which is why I'm back out here with Jack from Atlantis Water Gardens and special guest Alan Decker from Decker's Pond escapes out of New York to get this project done. As you guys saw from Brian's video, we kind of left off with that main waterfall section. We're going to keep building that out. There's going to be a sunken fire pit area that's over there. We're going to clean everything up on our way out of here. We've got a handful more lights to put in as we build that waterfalls. The rest of the lighting has already been done, but we basically just have to clean this entire area out. We did have kind of one little modification that sand beach area. We're going to readdress that and kind of rework this area. After Ashley and Seth lived with it for a little while, the sand just became a problem with their dog. So we're still going to leave it in that bottom and I love you can actually see the sand and how the current is actually making all these little dunes and stuff it looks so cool but we're gonna re-rock this area bring in some of that rocky gravel so that as the kids as the dogs work their way out they're not gonna be tracking a bunch of sand into their amazing house creating more of a mess so we're gonna readdress that but that's really the only thing left that we're going to do so we've got main waterfalls to build sunken fire pits we've got to clean up this entire area we've got to rework some lights but really just finish that last maybe five seven percent of this project and work our way out of here. And we've got five days to do it. I think that's more than enough time, but as you know, things do happen and challenges will arise while we're out here in Spain. So we'll see. Hopefully, 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 we're gonna get this project done. All right, let's move. We 
about an hour, hour and a half of daylight left, maybe if we're lucky. So I wanted to check in. This is kind of day one out here on the project. And I just want to give you guys an update as to where we're at. The beach area is completely finished. Got a little bit of cleanup, I guess, left to do just along the edge. But you can see we're all kind of piling in on this main waterfall here. Let me kind of walk you through what we've got going on. So we're going to have water coming over this waterfall right here. And then if you follow all the way over to here, there's also going to be water coming down through here. Then it will pull up in this area and split between the high point on this rock and this rock over here. And then we're going to get a little bit more water coming off of that. So later on in the video, when the water is actually flowing, we'll explain to you guys how that's able to happen and how we are able to pull that off. You've got Jack and Alan piecing this all together. Looks absolutely incredible with these big boulders. I think what's really cool is watching these guys work and just they're working these rocks in and out of each other. Nothing's in a straight line. They're mixing up the height on the rock. You know, you can see this rock kind of slopes down like that, just barely above our spill stone okay, there, which is going to be another waterfall. And then Alan was over here working that right side together. So it's very important to know elevations and setting all these rocks at the same height when you're splitting water. So coming together, we should have this waterfall totally done by the end of the day tomorrow, along with the grading, which puts us in excellent shape for the remainder of the week. We're getting there. I don't want to exude too much confidence yet because we still have a lot of work ahead of us. So, but I think we're actually going to hit the deadline this time and hit the mark. So follow along. We're going to do this. So it is day two out here on this project. We've got three more days to go, but I think we are in very good shape. We made a lot of progress yesterday. This is that main waterfall area that we've been working on and we'll continue to work on. And we're gonna hope to get all this buttoned up today. So we have only five, six, seven more stones that are gonna go in here inside the liner. So Jeff, tell us what's going on over here, bud. Oh, here's what's happening. We're gonna be <laughs> dumping our two pumps up here. They're gonna feed all these cascades. Now we did a lot of backfilling with gravel. We set all these giant boulders in here. We have to make sure that the water is gonna actually go over the waterfall. In order to do that, we have to seal the top of this. We're gonna do that with what's called a bib liner. We're gonna take a piece of scrap liner from over there, lay it in here, and I'm gonna trim it to fit behind all these rocks perfectly. Then what we'll do is we'll pull the liner back and we're gonna lay a bead of foam along the entire perimeter of this entire pool up here and push the liner down into it. So essentially it's gonna create a barrier. When the water dumps in here, it's gonna have to go up and then over the falls instead of down through the gravel. Perfect, so the reason that we're putting the liner down as opposed to the fabric that we've done in some of these smaller areas, one is to conserve on foam. We're getting pretty close on material. Yeah. So I think to just eliminate that stress, we would have to use a case and a half of foam to cover this entire square footage. And that's just not a reality. We don't have that much foam left. So doing it with the liner allows us to just do the edges and still accomplish the same thing. Well, like we said, that's what's happening up here. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. We've got a completed bib liner. What we did was we made sure we cut that liner super tight to the back of all our rocks, even up into these little coves here. Liner's cut nice and tight, laid it down flat. We pulled everything back and put our bead of foam right on top of our gravel. And then we pushed our liner right back in, squeezing that foam right up into the joint. Now we're gonna let that harden up. It's gonna be watertight. We can set the rest of our rocks and make this waterfall happen. It is day three out here and we're just getting started. The good news is, is we got the entire waterfall area done yesterday, minus a couple of edges. So that all looks incredible. And today, the order of the day is going to be finishing up the stepper pathway through the steppers, coming through the wetlands, stepper pathway steps down into here. And then Jack and Alan are gonna go ahead and start working on the fire pit area. So right now what they're doing is setting elevations, determining what the bottom height of those rocks need to be set at. And then they can start working their way throughout this fire pit. And we got a set of stairs that's gonna come from here down into this sunken fire pit. Uh, this is gonna be a great spot for the kids. This is gonna be with what that is. So imagine this is all surrounded by huge boulders in here, big landscape areas up top. It's gonna be a very like private spot. What I've got to figure out is how many stairs I need to get from this elevation down into that fire pit area. Awesome, so these are one of the steppers. They're all about an average thickness of that, but that's exactly what Jack is doing, is taking the elevation change between where Adrian is standing up to there and then, and then we'll divide that by the average thickness of these steps and then figuring out how many steps have to come down through here. So we've got a lot of work today as we do on every day, but that's kind of the name of the game. So you ready? 
this is why it is so important to use that laser. So we established what our grade was going to be and basically the patio is going to end up three inches up from this grade up into here. We actually started with a nine inch step because we knew three inches of it was going to be buried because more consistently the steppers that we have are six inches thick. So that way we're going to have a nice easy transition at the same height all the way up through and wrap in there. But it's always important to start the first one out right. Just about ready to wrap with day three, and this is the progress of this gorgeous staircase leading you down into the sunken fire pits. The outcropping stones look incredible. I love that none of them are really at the same height. These two are almost the same height, but then you've got a large one back behind, and then a, one that's lower than the other three right there, and then how they kind of come in and go out. The guys did an amazing job down here, as they always do, but it's just so cool to see these meandering staircases kind of leading you to and from these sunken areas. Can't wait to see see the finished product tomorrow when all this gets graveled these boulders get in for this fire pit and we are so close we also have some very good news that we'll share with you guys later in the video but i think we figured out the pumps hey it's me brian from team aquascape now it's time to update you on the progress here at aqualand I think I got the solution. You remember that problem we had? Those tubs that Ed was looking to get? Well, that fell through. And then he found another solution, and then that fell through. And so I'm thinking to myself, and actually the idea came from sitting at my father-in-law's house. And over next to his pond, he has an above ground, you're right, swimming pool. So I thought, what better way than to create a big self-contained container that's been proven to handle the pressure of water and everything else than just getting an above ground swimming pool. So I got on the internet really quick and I don't actually do this, I got on the internet really quick and, and found these above ground swimming pools. Check this out. I don't actually know if it's gonna work either because I think this is the first time in the history of filters that somebody's actually used an above ground swimming pool. So I found these giant 18 foot by nine foot, 52 inch deep swimming pools that are supposed to just set up, be freestanding, we're gonna put one here, another one way over here. One's gonna filter the big signature koi pond. Another one's gonna filter that smaller little section in here. And we're literally more that we're increasing the filtration by more than six times in what it was before, if it all works. I am keeping my fingers crossed that it's gonna work because if it doesn't work, that's a problem. Not just because we have to come up with another solution, but that's an epic mess if it goes bad. Stay tuned. We're gonna take you through step by step on how we convert these above ground swimming pools into the biggest koi filter this place has ever seen. Ooh, perfect timing, Haley. I was just coming to see the update. We're up to 243. All right. That total is smaller than the last one you looked at because I forgot to count the discount when they signed up early. The last time I saw it, 100% that was at 7. I think it was 17, 714. 714. And now we're at 664. Yeah. And so what happened again? We were offering the early sign up discount because we started sign up so early this year. Yeah. And I forgot to include that in this number. So we do a 10% discount for anybody that signs up before this certain date with really the motivation to help us schedule everything. Mm -hmm. We can get all of these people signed up before February 1st. Then it helps us with you know, just managing and, and all that kind of stuff, figuring out the schedule and so on. So we lose $50,000 yeah. because of discounts. Yeah. Well, that's okay. This number is actually the number I'm really watching the 243 because kind of our imaginary cutoff line is a 350 number. That's historically what we do in cleanouts every single year. And now it being what? So we're about a month in. A month in? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So what's the plan then for starting to call people now? Like, are we gonna start calling people a little bit more aggressively? Yes. And, yes? So I already started doing some of those today. <laughs> this is why she rocks. <laughs> High five! <laughs> actually, the calls are so, so important. And the reason I actually prefer Haley calling them is really just to stay in front of our customers. It's nice that we got 200 some people to call in just based off of an email, but really having a phone conversation with our past customers kind of solidifies those relationships we have. You're probably gonna see that Haley is gonna be a whole lot better at maybe moving them from a gold package to a platinum because she's having a conversation with them. She might even get the opportunity to 
upsell them on dosing systems and ion gens and color lights and all those types of things and put all kinds of detailed notes that she wouldn't be able to put in based off of an email that they sent back and just saying, hey, we wanna do this package. So I actually love the fact that over 100 people need to be called because I think even though the number from 243 will get up to 350, the other number that's gonna climb is that 664 number based off of upsells and moving them into different packages, which again, 100% has to be explained over the phone, not through an email. Can't wait to bring you back to this and see what that looks like, I don't know, in like a few weeks, maybe a month, I don't know. You just wait and see. That's it for this update. It's time to get you back to Spain. Jack, how are you feeling right now? At this I'm, very moment, how are you feeling? I'll tell you how I felt when we left here. When you and I left here with Brian, I was disappointed. I've never left a job unfinished. Yeah. And being able to get back here, like I've had anxiety the whole time until we got back here. Now today, finish line. We can see it. it's going to happen today. We're gonna to finish this project. We've already test run the waterfalls. You guys haven't seen that yet, but trust me, they're spectacular. Yes. So we hit that mark. We fixed some of our issues with the pump. It's just like finishing touches and we are finished, right? <laughs> I don't want to say it because <laughs> you know, like, I don't want to give that kiss of death. You know, like, no, no we, we, we are, man. We are, we are. That looks so handsome. <laughs> One of the cool things about recreating Mother Nature and the biomimicry is building the ecosystem and seeing all the wildlife that comes with it. Now, I don't know how long he's gonna stay around, but we got ourselves a handsome little fella right down in there. So, oh, there he goes. Where'd he go? There he goes. He's out of here. Is that cool? I'm, I'm Dude, freaking speechless. I'm standing here looking at this completed project and I am just grateful. I'm grateful for you and Alan and Brian and Ralph for traveling thousands of miles to help me put this epic, one-of-a-kind aquatic environment together. Uh, I mean, it truly is mind-blowing for a variety of reasons. This is the first of its kind in Southern Europe. Nobody around here has seen a water feature like this. Like you said, most of Southern Europe. I know for sure in Spain, because we've talked to the landscapers here and the stone suppliers. Seth, he searched high and low trying to find somebody that could build something like this for him and it just doesn't exist. So to be like the pioneers bringing something like this into this country right. is, is really special. Right. Everything you just mentioned is a testament to the five guys that we talked about in the beginning here. Without all this experience coming together, this just isn't possible. I'm so happy with the way this turned out. Seth and Ashley and the whole family are so happy, but my biggest feeling of accomplishment is having like friends like you to, to actually come together and put oh, this together. There. You, you, know, you doing okay? Please pause. <laughs> I gotta get it by cleaner here. Okay. Hey, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm crying. <laughs> I don't cry. He doesn't cry. Tears of, of Tears steel. Of <laughs> well, it's important to recap, you know, kind of where we've been to get to this point. Yep. And now I think it's time for the payoff. You want to walk through this thing? Let's do it, man. Yeah. So if we look at the plan, one of the key elements here was this deck that I'm standing on. This is cantilevered out over the water about 18 inches. In order to do that, we had to have uh, Nacho and the guys that work here construct an actual block wall inside the liner of the pond, which was the reason we have the ability to, to stretch this deck over the top. We've got a board structure here, cantilever 
maneuvering the beams out and then bringing the deck so close to the water, giving it that look where you're literally looking out the windows of the bedroom and you're, you're on the water. Now coming off the deck, we wanted to make this super interactive, be able to walk through and really give you a whole experience. This is not just the pond. This is a landscape experience here. So we want to draw you out into it. The seven foot long stone bridge, key element also. We're crossing over what is the main body of the pond into our intake base skimmer. Chris, look at that water just The draw here. down here is just incredible. What I love about these intake base skimmers is number one, it looks like just a natural extension of the pond. We're not looking at any boxes, nothing like that. It just looks like a part of the pond, which it is. And the fish can actually swim in and out of here without being impeded. So you'll see them a lot of times kind of right where the current starts to go into the intake bay, swimming against the current like a little fish treadmill. And here we go. We're walking through. We've got these really cool stepping stones. Imagine when this is all finished, there's plant life growing in all these joints, like some steppables, maybe some thyme or something like that, some sort of sedums that grow in here where the stones are just kind of peeking out in between plant life. Lots of plants like walking through the garden. You're not going to see every single vantage point from one section. And then you've got these stepping stones, which looks like they're floating in the water. Just an incredible look. And this is what we came back the second time in Spain finished. This massive set of waterfalls. We've got over 20,000 gallons an hour of water flowing down here. It's giving a great sound, just an amazing look. When you wake up in the morning, looking out of bed from that window and you're like, I can't believe this is my backyard. This is dream stuff, right? We had to bring in over a hundred yards of soil just to make this berm happen. So you can't just stack up rocks and create a volcano backyard. We don't want that. When this is planted and all that space is filled in, this is going to look like it's coming out of the mountains of Valencia. I know, Jack, you picture it. Brian pictures it. Ralph and Alan, myself, we can see the plants, but imagine this thing planted up, not even realizing that there's a step or pathway through here leading you to another such a neat element in this design. And it's this backyard fire pit. And it looks like maybe Seth's kids, Michael and Harper, have already been in here because there's a little bit of pea gravel now migrated down into the fire pit. But the concrete literally just dried, so I'm sure Seth and his family may have a little bonfire before the night's over to break this thing in. This is such a cool area. Jack, I think what I love about your style, because you and Alan did this whole area yesterday yeah. while I was buttoning up some of the other small stuff, but we have very similar styles in the way we think about these fire pits and the steps. When you have a, a suburban backyard, the easiest way to make it feel larger is by giving it elevation. We've got this huge berm over here, then we're sinking down into this fire pit. I can remember clearly standing out here when it was lap backyard, it didn't feel anywhere near this big. Now we've got dimension, we've got things happening. Like I love it when you can bring things up and down. It just gives such a cool feel. And like I said, it makes it feel so much larger. It really does. And then tucking in this, this staircase, bringing these rocks and giving it that sunken feel. I hate when rocks stick out like a tongue. You know what I mean? If I, we stuck a big step out here, yep. it just looks like crap. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It really but does look like if crap. You can tuck it in. Now, plants coming down, you're walking amongst these huge boulders as you make your way back across to where that wetland filter crossing is and then finally over to the deck. It's a one whole circuit now. Again, I'm talking about how we were never doing anything in a straight line. Even the staircase yeah. is not your conventional da -dunk, da -dunk, da -dunk, right? Nope. Like an escalator coming down. They're pivoting around rocks. You almost have, I don't want to call them frame rocks because they're not framing out a waterfall, but that well, rock it, is it framing is, out frame one, rock. two, three steps. The and way we took the natural curve here of this stone and yep. tucked it up against there and then fitting this one into what is the natural depression inside the rock that gives it a really cool feel like it completes the look this rock here actually had a cutout in it so alan and i were like well, let's take it and we'll put it on top of the step and let the rest of the rock go down into the soil and, and the height of it's perfect too because you needed to bring soil up that high yeah. so that that step didn't feel weird and it's also retaining all that soil well it also it helps the, it helps to hide the corner of the next step also. Correct. so when there's plants growing down and through here this will just blur yep. this will be blurred like you'll just see the step kind of in and amongst plants. I know the look that Seth definitely likes and I know Brian and I like it too is when plants come out over the step a little bit. Yep. Kind of just taking away all those hard lines and make it feel super soft walking up through the landscape. This whole section of the pond came to fruition when we were actually in Spain talking with Seth and Ashley. When I initially spoke with Seth, we were just looking at doing like decent sized pond off the bedrooms, kind of living on the water type thing, waterfall in the background. This expanded greatly when we actually sat in where the kitchen is. Looking out over this covered area, which we're calling Alonai. I'm not sure if it's called Alonai. <laughs> we just like the name. It just sounds fancy. Yeah, it does. But we're sitting there at the kitchen table. We're looking at like the sight lines here. We're like, wait a minute. Why aren't we using this area yeah. as well? Bringing in this small section of pond and then setting that stone that's right up against the patio where, again, right on the water and having something, just a small piece to look at when you're sitting here because a lot of the sight lines are directed here when you're on this side of the house. Mm -hmm. But over here would have just been either grass or landscape area. We're like, let's take advantage of this awesome space. And then, then we thought about, okay, how are we gonna connect this to that? And that's where the whole deep stream idea came in. This is about two feet of water here. Yeah. So imagine when there's fish in here, they're really large, swimming back 
back and forth from like this small pond area over into the large body of water, how cool that's gonna be. Having the peninsula gives us the opportunity to bring planting in and soften the mm -hmm. whole thing and really create a separation. Because yep. if you're sitting here, this is like its own little private space Correct. off the lanai. Yep. That separation comes in because of this peninsula. Yeah. If we just tied the whole thing in, it would still be cool, but not as cool. Correct. Right? And it just gives you more dimension in the landscape, more reasons to like want to come out and see what this is about because you're not going to be able, again, see everything from one spot. Mm -hmm. And then the way it opens back up to the pond here is super cool. Let's take a walk over here real quick and look at this. But listen, you can put a bridge in. People just go where they feel like coming. Yeah. Like we literally walk across here, across top of these stones yep. and that's what the kids are doing. Yep. And we kind of thought about that again when picking out the rocks, but we're going to have kids bouncing all over this thing. They're not going to just not go to a spot because it's hell of not. Yep. They're going to be bouncing all over. So it had to be super stable using these big, like nice solid rocks to make this happen. That was another part of design element. One thing that I think is such a cool part of this design as well is this sand bottom right here. And this is that Lanai area, the Lanai. Lanai. But they have a huge dining room table in there. They definitely spend a lot of time gathering around the table. You can tell that they're just like enjoy and relax and with these huge doors leading you out to this patio. And I love the stone that's flush, that's running plumb, straight vertical, and the water comes right up to the edge of this surface here. But the sand bottom down in there is just such a cool, cool effect. But it provides the kids, while they're young, an opportunity to really get in there, root yep. around, some of that larger gravels, it's uncomfortable to walk on. It's like a big sandy play area in here. The type of sand we use here is crucial. You can't just use like a mason sand inside here. First of all, it's going to be a huge problem for animals and bacteria, but also it's going to turn to muck. This is a beach sand. So we actually test a few sands yep. before we put this in. We brought in different samples, brought in some tubs of water and tested them in the water. You want a sand that if it gets up in the column, it settles right back down and yep. there's no dust in it. Right. Nothing, nothing's going to cloud the whole pond yep. up. The granules are a little bit bigger. It's, it's like microscopic gravel almost. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now the kids can play in the sand, and by the time they walk up those two sets of stairs, the sand's off their feet. It's off their feet, the place. Right. And this waterfall, we wanted to keep it simple. We didn't want a big cascade like we have over there. Mm -hmm. We wanted something where if that big slider is open, they're sitting in there having a meal, it's just a tranquil sound. And this, facing this lanai, yep. that roof brings the sound and carries it right into the house. It's almost like an echo chamber yeah. when it brings it in. So if this thing was as voluminous, there's it, see that? I see like what we're doing part? there? Yeah. We got lanai, voluminous, we got all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Anyways, if we were to put that waterfall right here, you would not be able to sit in that room. It'd be, so it'd be overpowering, it'd be overpowering. And that's where another design element comes in is understanding what the sound of the water is going to be. We faced everything towards the house, knowing full well that the sound was going to carry this way. So the big waterfall had to be set way back. Yeah. Otherwise it's too much in your face. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Jack, I can't tell you enough. I know you said it at the beginning of the reveal, but this project was just so much fun. I'm truly blessed to be a part with you guys and yeah. such an amazing team. Thank you so, so I much. I wouldn't have done it without you. <laughs> I, maybe I would have. <laughs> no, but I tell you what. I, mean, yeah, I had to sub out because as, as you guys already know, Brian had to stay back and help the rest of the team Aquascape continue to plug along with some of those projects that were that are happening at Aqualand as well as some of the training events. But he's also going to Puerto Rico next week. The fact that like five different people's kind of talent and vision came together to bring this to reality, that is just incredible. And the fact that we can work together so seamlessly, like one person's over here, one person's over there, but we're still doing the same quality of work. That is how like something like this happened in 17 days. Unbelievable. 17 days, this came to life. That's incredible. Absolutely, absolutely incredible. Guys, thanks so much. If you like what you saw, make sure you let us know in the comments section below. This project has been an absolute blast. Jack, Brian, started it out. Ralph was here from Pondscapes AZ. He's one of my dearest friends, but such an incredibly talented artist. And of course, you have Alan Decker. I know he came in at the last week, but without him, we wouldn't have been able to get it to this point. Thank you so much. Stay tuned. We'll be back.